so much better to be working on a robot. It's so much better to find when somebody did something very nice. It's not, a, not necessarily a good logical argument to do something like that, but the pleasure of finding something. I think it is, though, because you, well, it's like the plumbers and certificating saws. You know, you've got something that you can do the wrong thing with, and you're going to do it early. That's pretty slick. Yeah, what is it with plumbers and certificating saws? I don't know what you mean, but they have seen more. See, got the grain coming up here. You see the, the line of the summer wood and, and, and late or early wood and late wood. And the same thing here. So this this grain here wants to be planed from this direction, and this grain wants to be planed from this direction. And it's not just me. It, it's actually definitely. <laughs> yeah, okay. it's definitely the wood. You'll notice that you'll, as you're planing along the board, it's going beautifully, getting this perfect shaving, and all of a sudden the shaving breaks. And then you start to get a little bit of pitting yeah. beyond that, and that's what it is. So on this side, you'd be reversing direction every foot or so. <clears throat> it probably on a piece of pine it would not be because it's it's buttery enough that mm. you, you could you generally could plane right through and still get a decent edge. You know, you, mm. like this edge here was done with a uh, a router bit, and it, it's going to give you a pretty good indication of whether you need to change direction. There's no tear out on either side here. Whereas the planer, I can see here, you know, it's planing beautifully um, <clears throat> all the way across to here. And then can you see these dark areas here? It started to break. The wood was chipping instead of being sliced. So this tells me that I'm going to want to plane the wood in this direction with the hand plane. Otherwise, I'm going to end up with this same sort of broken, rough edging that the, that the power plane left. But you know, if you can't see that or if it's not immediately obvious, just start planing and it'll tell you what you need to do. You know, yeah, it's very, it, it's pretty clear once you use the plane. <clears throat> Can you get around that mostly by taking a really shallow cut? Yes. Yes. That will help a lot. Good down pressure on the plane will help. You know, using the front of the throat, the part of the sole right in front of the throat to hold it down as you're playing also will help. Um, and then beyond that, if, it's, if a thin shaving is not working, then um, perhaps switching, if you've been using a block plane, switching to a built blend bench plane with a higher pitch or cutting a back pedal on your plane iron. I generally don't find that I need to do that type of stuff when I'm working with soft wood. It's only when you get into Hardwoods are very figured hardwoods that um, you might need to start taking those extra little steps to really get good results. And sharpen your point. And keep the plane <laughs> child. Really, to me, that is you know, Based on my experience of playing, if there's one thing you're going to do for your plane, sharpen it. Keep it sharp. That's really makes the biggest, by far the biggest difference. No, I thought maybe you'd say goodbye. Oh. Are there any other questions? Thank you very much. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, I just an observation. I, it seems to me that uh, if I'm going to do any edge grooming, I'm better off um, roughing the board on the joiner to make sure I have the 90 degrees, but then using the plane to get a really smooth Service. Yes. Yeah, I think that's a, it's a quick way to arrive at a good, yeah. good surface, quick and accurate way. No question. Uh, just as a side note, um, Stanley and some other plane makers have made, um, I think they call them miter fences that you can attach to your plane that would allow you to either plane a bevel on the edge of the board or you can lock it in at a 90. So it would be a, a bit more like a jointer, help you keep, keep
keep uh, the service that you're planning perpendicular to the side. Could you set it up to do that with that board, just, just to show how how one could do it? Yes. To do what? Exactly. Um, make a a super jointed edge. <laughs> um, with the jig that I was talking about, or just in general? Just in general. Well, you do you need a, a vise of some sort. Mm -hmm. So to get that locked in place, or you could put it between, what we'll often do is just take two timbers like this, two four by sixes, and clamp them with together with this in between so that it's pinched. And then you just, you know, walking right down the edge of the board to create a flat surface. The, the slight problem with that is that it, you know, there's nothing right. well, that's, that you're flat. That was my real question. Okay. Well, one thing that can help is if you have if you have two or three boards that you're going to be joining, clamp them together so that those surfaces are all mm -hmm. you know, together, and that will make them a little bit wider, a little more stable, mm -hmm. and, and generally you'll end up with a flatter surface that way. But um, short of that, you know, you could this jig that I was talking about clamps onto the side of the plane, and it it pushes against the board below to keep it. Um, flat, so it's sitting here like so. You would pull the plane up so that that fence is against the side of the board that you're joining, and it would tend to hold the sole of the plane perpendicular to this face, assuming that you know this this face is decent and, and flat. So that as you're planing across, it would keep this perpendicular to that face. Skill and jigs, huh? Yes. Jigs. Well, thank you for coming. Well, well thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. I love talking about planes. Mm -hmm. Now I can use these things. <laughs> yes. Good luck. If you be afraid of them. So this is a number four bench plane. Uh, very common plane for planing. Often referred to as a smoothing plane, the number three and number four bench planes are often smoothing planes that would be used after the jack plane. And here's the anatomy of the plane. This is the front handle or tote, rear handle or tote. This is the sole of the plane. This is the throat where the plane iron comes through the body. This is the lever cap, which has a little cam that locks the plane iron in place held in place by the lever screw. This is the two-part plane iron. This is uh, known as the cap iron and then this is actually the the plane iron itself with the cutting edge bevel down in the case of a bench plane. This lever here allows you to laterally adjust the plane iron to get the protrusion of the iron parallel to the sole of the plane and this whole device is called the frog. These two screws hold the frog onto the plane body and the frog can be removed. Uh, makes machining the plane a lot easier to have this as a separate part that gets bolted into the plane body. On the back side is the adjustment screw. This yoke here is captivated in between these two lobes on the adjustment screw. Screwing that in or out moves this pin in or out, which in turn raises or lowers the plane iron. Which pin? This one here. Thank you. Anything else? Anything I missed? No, I think that was great.